Because the world needs to know, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because the world needs to know, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because the world needs to know, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because the world Greetings. Welcome to Say So. Greetings. Welcome to Say So, where we talk about it, whatever it is, because what you do not know can hurt you. So let's get to the root. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Letitia R. Stuckey. And today we have a special guest here with us by the name of Miss Kim Bell. Kim and I actually met um, February 19th of this year at the African American Book Day, which was held at the Malloy Jordan East Winston Heritage Center. And uh, she and I, after we read excerpts from our books and things, we exchanged contact information and we began a conversation from there. We also met up again at the, um, the very first African American poetry reading, which was held at the Southside Library on February 26th. And um, once again, we share a love for poetry as well as writing. So um, actually at the poetry event, her grandson was the um, raffle ticket winner of a free autographed copy of Cast Down But Not Destroyed Destiny's Child. And um, so in our conversations, after we shared our books and about our healing journey and some of our childhood experiences, then we, we noticed some commonalities in some of our experiences and the, the kind of the trauma that we experienced growing up, um, developing in childhood. And I thought it needful and necessary for her to share with you um, her personal testimony and story of survival because it is definitely one of victory and it is definitely needful and I believe that it will help someone. So um, just from your own personal experience, your words, um, if you would share with us a little bit about your personal testimony growing up. Thank you, uh, Letitia, for having me on your show today. Um, <clears throat> well, as uh, you said, I'm Kim Bell, and a little bit about me. First of all, um, I have a large family. I've been married for over 30 years. Um, I had eight children, and I have 12 grandchildren and one on the way. I'm a semi-retired nurse, and I'm a newly NLP coach, life coach practitioner. Okay. So I'm really excited about um, using that for uh, my future plans. Some of my hobbies are like sewing, I love to cook soul food, mm -hmm. and my <clears throat> one of my favorite things is writing, writing books as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I wanna talk with you all about today. And um, so the purpose of me writing, I write children's book as well as I've written a memoir, but let me first talk about the purpose of me writing children, book, children's books is because as a young child, um, I was always, sort of speak, like on punish in a punishment all the time, and so it really okay. didn't really have anything to do but to use my imagination. So the purpose was to impress upon children that we all have dreams and an imagination, and there is nothing wrong with sharing or expressing your expressing your imagination with friends, your family, or the world, no matter how silly or extraordinary your thoughts may be. Okay. So as a child, I was never able to express my thoughts or anything, so they were always inside of me. So I okay. kind of feel silly sometimes. It's like a little girl in me mm -hmm. that wants to come out. So <clears throat> I would like to just share a little little bit about me. So the name of my, um, my uh, book is, uh, the, is Kim's Creations. Um, so as a child, as I said, I was never ex able to express my imagination. Uh, Kim was inspired by slicing a banana and started seeing the faces. So she figured if she shared the things that she saw in, in her world with others, especially children, they would start expressing what they imagined or the faces they saw in their world. So what it is, I have a seat 
quill of books okay. called Faces. So the first one I wrote was Bananas okay. and its Faces. I started slicing bananas. I started seeing faces. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a brilliant book that I also il illustrated and, and wrote. Okay. Uh, the next one I wrote was called The Moon and Its Faces. When I saw the moon, I saw those faces. Mm -hmm. Me and my children, one night I shared with them the faces that I saw, and it actually frightened them. But I said, don't be scared. You know, those faces can't do anything to mm -hmm. you. It was, you know, and they were really able to see it. Mm -hmm. And then, so that was The Moon and Its Faces. And so another one I wrote was called The Clouds and Its Faces. You actually you can see if you look out in the sky you can actually see faces and shapes mm -hmm, on the clouds so, I agree. <laughs> so the last children's book that's coming out this year is called my dark room and its faces I'm really fascinated with that one because lots of times um, as a child I didn't express that well I express it a little more I was um, I was abused and so like I said one of my ways of punishment was in my room where my dad started turning the lights out so I was really frightened about things that were in my room, okay. but later to find out when the lights came on, those were just things that were in my room. For instance, um, the branches on the trees made it look like there was <laughs> like monsters. Mm -hmm. and it had a red light, and and when the lights came on, that red light was just just the uh, eye of my TV, okay. the little the little the little light that yeah. you know that tells when your TV's on and off. Yes, but. It was just amazing how I used my imagination, and then here today I was able to write books uh, about what I was seeing in my mind or my thoughts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Definitely um, sounds like you have a gift of creativity, because creativity is something that everyone may not see it at first, but once you describe to them and tell them what it is, then they can better see what you're seeing, or at least imagine um, from your point of view. So that's awesome. That's an awesome gift to have. Yes. And um, as it pertains to um, your time alone in your room can and the punishment, um, can you kind of expound about that and tell us a little more about your personal testimony from that point of view? Well, like I said, Letitia, um, I, I just really, you know, didn't have anything to do, you mm -hmm. know, so... I would just think of weird thoughts and uh, be creative with what I was thinking about. But um, later in life is when I realized I could take those thoughts and, and, and write children's books. And, and even though, like I said, it was silly and it seemed weird, but that was just the way my mind was working. You know, even those slices of bananas, I actually saw faces, faces on those banana slices. Um, so okay sounds good so um is there anything else about your childhood that you can remember that you would like to share um to to the listeners as it pertains to your personal testimony yes ma'am Letitia so um one of my one of my big dreams in life is to um create a home for for women or young young women that have been abused okay. um one out of five girls uh usually or have been sexually abused and a statistic say one out of 20 young men mm. have been sexually abused well i was one that was sexually abused so what i did was i wrote a memoir because i think that my story could help someone if i can even just help one person right. with my story i feel i feel like i'm uh that I've done something that God has placed me here on this earth to do. So um, the, the part of the memoir that was um, exciting to me or to share was about what my father did to me and my sisters and how I was the one who really was the one who saw everything that was happening. Okay. And actually was the one that told okay and my mom actually believed me excellent so um why why my sister would give in to what this perpetrator my father did i don't know and why god helped me to push this man off of me mm -hmm. um I, I don't know that either but i guess i was much stronger than my sister was and that's what I, I want to install and expound upon women that you can set boundaries and you don't have to let p 
people, you know, abuse you, okay. it may seem like you can't do anything when you're young. Right. We didn't have many <clears throat> choices or people to go to back in, in my day. But, okay. of course, today there's there's so, so many more things that are available mm -hmm. for people that are abused. So the name of my book is called I'm Gonna Get You Back. And the reason why I named it that was because when I when I had to um, share with my mother what my father was doing to us, the, the authorities didn't believe me. So I had a, they had it set up in a situation where we had to catch my father in the act okay. so that was really frightening I'm sure. for me as a child wow. <laughs> so um, I had to actually wake my mother up to let her know what her husband was doing okay so my mama wow. slept very hard because okay. this was going on by the way for many years mm -hmm. and she didn't know this was going on I actually had to shake the bed like okay it's happening right and run back in my bed, right. you know, to let her know it was happening. So she actually caught my dad in the act, wow. and we we were able to get a case on him. And my father actually spent um, three and a half years. But before that, we had to go to court. Mm -hmm. So while we were in court, I had to testify against my father. Wow. My dad was a very abusive dad. Uh, he was supposed to be a preacher man. He was handsome. Everybody mm -hmm. believed in him. But this guy was nothing like the way he was. Um, I, I believe I said he beat on us with water hoses. So not only was he physically sexually abusive, abusive he right. was physically abusive. Mm -hmm. He would cuss us out and call us all kind of bad, horrible names. I wish I could say on the radio is, but I won't say it now. You all have to get the book. But Verbal abuse. he was very verbally and emotionally abusive. Yes. I was a very, I was very afraid as a child. So. Wow. There's this this kid that is still in me and that's You're still coming coming yeah. out and I'm so glad and it's so weird because when I ran away from home at the age 17 it mm -hmm. seems like that was when life began. Okay. But to go back into the courtroom, us I had to testify against my dad mm -hmm. to to tell the judge what my father was doing to my sisters and I and what he did to her mm -hmm. and I had to actually point him out. The judge says, who wow. in the courtroom was the one you saw right. having sex with your my sister? Goodness. So I had to point to my dad okay. and, you know, and tell him. So as he was leaving out of the courtroom, he says, I'm going to get you back. And it was so frightening. I'm sure. And the reason why it was so frightening was because I didn't know what he meant. Exactly. So as I got older... Is he going to try to get my children? Is he going to kill me? Because he he was he would say words like that. I'm going to kill you if you ever run off. I'm going to kill you if you do this. He was a bounty hunter. Okay. A wow. best bondsman. So he wow. carried pistols. So right. I was always afraid of him. If you ever run off, I'm going to kill you. You know, stuff like that. So um, the reason why I named it that again was I, is not only because the words that he says is... I'm going to get you back is what I said. I'm not going to let this man live in my head, That's rent right. free for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and torment me for the sickness that he had. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's what I want to help women and even young men to see. Wow. That um, you don't have to live a dysfunctional life, which I had a big huge dark side of me because mm -hmm. most time when when young people are abused they end up being on drugs or prostitution yes. um a whole host of things you know that are this considered dysfunctional definitely but i'm just so thankful you know that you know through all that i had to go through i, I turned out to be functional like i said had a wonderful family i became a registered nurse um i was able to raise my kids and you know they didn't have any trouble with the law or anything like okay. that so um my big dream as i said the, the what i want to help also for these teenager adolescents or young women or young men to do is to go on pathways to life that really means something to make good choices yes 
to uh, make great decisions. You don't have to live that life. That's you don't right. have to stay in those type of situations. There's organizations, there's um, social services. Mm -hmm. Tell someone safe that you feel safe with that you know to, that you can tell them what's going on. Mm -hmm. You you can tell not the person that's the perpetrator or the one that's causing the issue, but maybe tell your safe parent. I told my mom I felt safe telling her. That is good. Because lots of time we know that uh, people don't believe this is your story. True. Yes. So, so tell someone that you feel safe with. You might have to go to your school and tell your principal. You might have to, to um, like I said, tell the social services or your social worker at school, the police. Mm -hmm. Now there's things set up now where the authorities will believe you. Back in my day, the authorities didn't believe me. Wow. So I had to live in this situation for years. Right. You know, so I just want to let people know there is a way out. And mm -hmm. you don't have to live a dysfunctional life. And uh, when I finally get my home together, I will have resources so these people that have been down the wrong path, they right. could be on the pathway to a real life that's excellent wow. yes ma'am excellent so instead of surviving they would be able to thrive they would be thriving Absolutely. and there's a big difference in that because when you've experienced abuse of any kind it's like me against the world nobody understands i'm in this by myself so you're in survival mode whatever i need to do to survive that's what i'm gonna do but there's a difference between living and enjoying the journey and going through the healing process and all of that so that is key and very important one of the things that um that i wanted to commend you on is having the courage to speak out to break the silence having the courage to tell your mom and by god's grace and mercy she believed you because i've done a previous um previous episode or broadcast on family too and that's not everybody's reality yes, sometimes you're not believed and sometimes you're you're the victim is blamed well what did you do and things of that nature so it's a blessing that your mom believed yes. you yes, um, and are you because it, it makes me think like the protector because you were the one that broke the silence are you the older sister what do you fall in the line and it's so weird that you said that. I'm I'm the second child. You would think the oldest one would be the the more stronger one. Mm -hmm. Like I said, God must have had a purpose. I must have been Clearly. stronger or something. Clearly. And uh, speak on the part about um, how you may have to be on have to have therapy or be on some type of medication. Mm -hmm. I had to go through a lot of that because I I was diagnosed to have post traumatic um, syndrome. Mm -hmm. PTSD. Due, yes, yeah. ma'am. Do to what my father did to me. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of psychological issues, um, lots of therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't realize the things they do to you as a child. Yes. Anything basically that happens to you as a child, yes. it will go on into your adulthood. adulthood. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. So yeah. I had to encounter and endure all that therapy, being on medication. But I must say with my newly NLP um, practitioner classes, I was freed from a lot of anxiety. Oh my Excellent. God, I feel I feel so much better mentally. That's good as far as far as getting help. So you might have to go through a lot of healing you if you've been through what I've been through. So, Certainly, yes. And we will in my program will have those resources available. Excellent. And uh, if it needs to be psychiatrists or psychologists on board, we're there. And like I said, I'm a life coach and could probably do some techniques to help with people in that type of trauma. Yes, mm -hmm. that's important. And that's I know when I when you think about a life coach or you think about going to someone to tell them about your story and your experiences, you need someone like you who has been there who has those experiences. Yes, yes ma'am. Because I've been to school and being a school being in school is good, but book knowledge and actual experience is completely different. So that's excellent that you can help from the knowledge that you've learned in your trainings and everything as well as your experience with anxiety, with fear, with dysfunction, and all of that. So that is powerful. Yes. That's an awesome combination. Um, there was another thing that I heard when you were speaking. Um, oh, I'm so glad that you clarified the title of your upcoming memoir um, <laughs> because 
it's like an oxymoron because oh it makes me think of the scripture that uh says that they meant it for evil but god allowed like it yes, yes. yes. turn it around book. for your good because your dad his words were negative but you're flipping it and saying that you're not going to live in my mind and my heart i'm going to mm -hmm. be free from That's you right. and you're going to be able to live as opposed to just survive so that is awesome. Bless God for your testimony. Yes, ma'am. So it's not a revengeful book. Exactly. It's an actual a self-help book mm -hmm. to help them get out of this bondage that they were in. And and I often think, why why did it happen to me? Why mm -hmm. did it happen to me? You know, I know I, I, I was a registered nurse and I helped a lot of people, but God had a way larger calling mm -hmm. for me than I thought. Exactly. And so I had to go through these things in order for me to be able to help people this is true. further down the line. And, and I'm so excited and looking so far forward to where my future is going to go to helping these people with my story. Excellent. I agree wholeheartedly. And you said something about when you gave the statistics, um, one in five girls and one in 20 boys. I know there is a part... Um, in, in my book where through the eyes we talked about um, reporting and the thing with reporting is it may even be more common than that but not lots of people exactly. don't break the silence like you they don't That's tell right. and they just carry it and like you said that what the seeds that are planted in our childhood have no choice but to grow and spring up into our adulthood because it's not been plucked up anything that's planted is going to grow exactly. be it good or bad so um that is just wow it's profound it's profound and i like it when you refer to the little girl inside of your your inner child we all have them we all have them <laughs> yes we do. um so that is awesome yeah so mine's my part didn't come out till I was adulthood, and I was Me like, too. when I was talking about psychiatry, why, <laughs> why is it coming out now? Right. It happened way back then. Exactly. Because I was busy. Yeah. I didn't have time to think about yes. it. I had this family to raise. I had my career. Right. I had all this, and then after the kids grew up and everything, I was like, what is going on? Why am I having those thoughts? Right. Why am I seeing dad doing this to me? Right. Why am I seeing all flashbacks. these flashbacks? Right. My dad would take us to the XXX movies to oh. entice us to do okay. things on him. So wow. it was like, why are these flashbacks of these pictures coming in? Exactly. So my, my doctor would tell me, you repressed it. Yes. It has to come out. It does. Now it's coming out. Exactly. Now I got to heal. Exactly. And it's like, can I take this? Exactly. So, but I went through it. I can take someone else through it. Exactly. I can just speed the process up now because I know about it and I've been through it. Wow. Yes, ma'am. I'm so excited, Miss Letitia. As well you should be. There is so much deposited in you, and it's awesome. It's awesome. I can't wait to get my autograph copy of the memoir yes, when it comes out, when it's published. Um, shameless plug, we're planning an indie author self-publishing workshop. It's probably going to be in October, maybe September for this fall. So definitely come. We're going to have lots of good information. Uh, creative and inexpensive ways for you to get the work done that's needed for your book to get it published and all that so that will be helpful um wow i, just, I also want to let you know um tisha that um my children's books are on um published self-published on mm -hmm. amazon okay .com, yes. and i'm hoping by the end of year when you have your your um, mm -hmm. workshop, workshop yeah. that my book will be already released. So look for me, Kim Bell, on Amazon.com, and uh, look for my books, Bananas in Their Faces, The Moon in Its Faces, The Clouds in Its Faces, and My Dark Room in Its Faces, and then look forward to more sequels of Faces. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. Yes, wow. And I love your name. I think I told you that. I'm not sure if I told you that on personal in person or over the phone, but Kim Bell is clear, it's precise, it's to the point, not hard to spell. I can see that in light, so I can definitely see you going places. It's a blessing. Um, let's see. We were Googling on um, online just to see if my, what my name would bring up. Okay. <laughs> Me and my grandchildren. Okay. And it actually, uh, when they put in Kim Bell, one of my books came up. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Yes, yes. Google. Google is a beautiful yeah. thing. Isn't that right? Wow. So let's see. So I think it's awesome how you allowed something traumatic, something that could have been devastating and damaging, and God allowed it to be turned into something where you're reaching out to children, encouraging them to be creative with their imaginations um, and things of that nature. And you're actually, you have a home, you know, a vision for a home to help women. Um, you also are going to 
publish your own story, it is awesome. And your audience, like um, we spoke on the phone, your audience is going to find you. And you have the courage and the strength to speak up and speak out. That's not the first time I've heard a story um, like yours, but it's very rare. Um, the only reason I think um, the other lady was able to share is because it was the type of environment, a healing environment, where we come together as women to talk. And But other than that, we just carry things. And as women, we're carriers anyway. We carry children. We carry our feelings, our emotions. But um, that can, you know, the load gets a little heavy. Once you're carrying things for years and years and baggage, and like you said, bondage, it turns into bondage after a while. It's carrying you. It's making decisions for you exactly. and through you. Um, so that is awesome. And like you, my, um, my childhood trauma and journey didn't really come out in this fullness surface or reach the top and, or peak, should I say, until adulthood too. And later on in adulthood, and like you, I had repressed some sexual abuse and things like that. So that does happen. But like your doctor said or your counselor said, it has to come out. It has to, it has to yes, you know. Yes. And if it doesn't, what is going to happen? Like, it's toxic. It's It shouldn't, it you know. Sick. Exactly. It makes you sick. In you several ways. Yes. Have anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could lead into a whole host of things. In fact, diseases and inner things just because of your mind being sick like that. So true. I agree. Wow. Yeah, so. It's awesome. And those of you who are listening, you cannot see Miss Kim Bell, but you will see her. Yes. And when you do, you will know her. She has a fashion sense, a fashion sense and she she just stands out. She's got a unique personality. She's a unique woman. So I'm so glad Thank that our paths have Thank crossed. You. you are more than welcome. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. Is there anything else? Is there anything that you would like to leave with the audience? Any advice if there's someone that is maybe their repressed or regressed um, um, situations are coming up. Maybe they're having flashbacks, night sweats, um, memories, um, and things of that nature. Or um, you could either speak to the woman or the inner child, and the inner child, or you can speak to a child if there's a child that's experiencing something like what you and your sisters experienced and you being able to see it and the decisions you made. Is there anything that you would leave our listeners with encouragement, words, final thoughts? Absolutely. So First Peter 5, it says um, that we only have to suffer a, for a little while. Mm -hmm. And Psalms, I believe it's 91, where it shares that God is our protector. Mm -hmm. And he has his pinions over us and protecting us. So um, that's what I would like to leave. I also would like to leave your your listeners with my email, which is Kim's Creations with a K. That's K I M S K R E A T I O N S, the number sixty three, at gmail dot com. And my purpose for you, me leaving you with my email is because I'm giving free NLP life coach practitioners uh, free advice um, to help you with any type of situation you may have as an abused child whether it be sexually emotionally or physically I am I'm, I'm, I'm helping people in, in those situations for free excellent yes, free is always good <laughs> um, now NLP do you remember what the acronym stands for NLP. I do. Okay. NLP is Neuro Logistic Programming. Okay. Some people that have very serious issues like we have mm -hmm. as children. Yes. They may have trauma. to have a special, right, that's the word trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have to have a special technique. Okay. Because it's so embedded. This and so it, it's just what it really is, is just creating new um, I must just use the term happy pathways in our mind okay. to change that that one bad pathway that's, you know, like I may have an anxiety attack mm -hmm. every time somebody abuses me. Okay. I was literally having them. So if I feel abuse coming on, I would go into a severe anxiety attack okay. or if I talk about abuse. Uh -huh. So when, they, when I had the um, neurologistic programming done on me, once I was at the peak of that, Abuse, mm -hmm. they will stop it. Okay, and then they will make me think of about three or four 
happy a moments, pleasant, pleasant mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. to to have that one bad pathway not find the way to give me an anxiety attack. Okay. It's a very sophisticated uh, programming. So, um, so we'll, that's what I'll be doing if anyone would like to have that done. Excellent. So definitely reach out to Kim Bell. And if I had one thing to um, pull out from this, it would be, and you actually reiterated several times and gave, gave examples of who they could tell, tell someone. Tell someone, break the silence. And from um, even in the beginning, talking about your marriage and your life and the accomplishments that you've made, you didn't, because I did another um, broadcast on unbroken curses, you destroyed the curse. Yes, ma'am, You destroyed the curse. In fact, when I was younger, I said, when I have children, they will never be treated this way. So my children were never sexually or physically abused. I must be, I'm so thankful for that. Yes. And... It was, it was not going to happen. I was not going to allow it. I was I was very open and, and very communicate, you know, had a great communications mm-hmm. and relationships with my with my children and that was something that was not going to go on in my family anymore. Excellent. And I broke the cycle you back did. when I was when I was young at about about 13 or so. Mm-hmm. I broke that cycle. Wow. And uh, and I'm hoping to break some more cycles throughout my life. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Sounds like you're well on your way. Yes, ma'am. Full Thank speed you. ahead. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, so we look forward to hearing more from you, Miss Kim Bell, and maybe in the future. Once the book is ready and prepared for purchase, we'll have you back on so you can promote that and let our listeners know where they can get it from. And um, until then, you guys will be um, should be satisfied with getting the, the Faces series from Kim's Creations. Um, so until next time, this has been an awesome broadcast. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story of survival mm, and personal for, testimony. Thanks so much for having me, Letitia. You're welcome. So... Remember that God has the final say-so about where you have been, where you are, and where you are going. You're simply in the process of becoming. Until next time, miracles and blessings to you today and every day.